Good morning. My name is Eduardo Duenas. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm going to let uh, people sign in. Um, I will maybe give uh, one or two minutes to do that. Uh, please, uh, I see I have some people in. That's good to know. Uh, let me know if you can hear me, please. You can do a thumbs up. And uh, if you want me to fix something right now that we are testing, please text it in the, uh, in the box. We will start in one minute. Oh, I have to tell you that for today's topic, we're gonna be, it's gonna be birds. But if we can get a little bit out of birds, maybe to make a point or, or, when you're trying to communicate with us, that's okay. Because in nature, everything is connected. Check here. I'm so excited, as you can see. I have a ton of artifacts that I, I brought from the lab today because uh, I want this to be uh, in any direction that I that you want it to go. Like if you want to talk more specific, one specific bird or in a specific uh, adaptation, that's okay. And uh, I hope I have enough things to. Uh... Thank you, Katie. Thank you uh, for joining us. Okay, um, let me see. I want to give you a few more seconds to see if we're ready to start. Okay. Like I said, today we're going to be talking about birds. But uh, we're going to be talking about characteristics of the animal. We're going to be talking about uh, what do they like to eat. What do they like to where how they behave um interesting facts on, on of them how we can help them too that's important because uh why do we need to learn these things how what the robin uh red breast like to eat uh where do they go if they migrate or not well that is important because uh animals creatures living creatures are uh can be used as uh, biological indicators in other words, whatever happened to the birds, it will happen to us. So if we treat them and help them, we are helping our ecosystem that we are part of. So helping birds uh, is helping humans indirectly and sometimes directly. So that's the reason we need to learn more and more about birds and not only birds, any other animals. So let's start with birds now. Birds, they are all different sizes, all different shapes, and they have a specific characteristics. Let's start with the first one. They have feathers. Feathers can be all different kind, colors, shapes. And how do we identify feathers or how we track animals based uh, using clues like feathers that we can find on our hike? Well. It's pretty obvious the size of them feathers can come from different parts of the animal can come from wings breast or tail and they have a specific shape the design is as a it might change because uh uh the function on the animal if flying is a complex thing it's not that easy <laughs> so do you have any guest about what kind of be a bird is big enough and have this color black and from below under is light like gray or white a little bit any guess i will let uh, amanda told me there's a few uh, seconds in the delay seconds on the communication so i will wait a little bit but i have another one to show you some feathers are more easy to identify the others. This one, as you can see, has a specific color. That could make our work easy when we try, if we try to identify birds. So if anyone wants to participate, ostrich, that's an excellent guess. But no, this is a local native animal, a na native bird. It, it's, it's huge, as you can see. And by the color, we will start with this one. 
the size. So I found these feathers matching with the description. Huge. And as you can see, these are turkey vulture feathers. And this other one right here is different. What we're going to look at this one, patterns, stripes. But what I like to look at is the tip of the tail. If you notice, it's a different color. It's white. That's the clue that I use to try to identify it beside the size. And I think it might be one of this one. What do you think? Looks similar, right? Yes, it is. This is a Cooper's Hawk tail feather. These feathers can be found during any hike. It is important that uh, we leave the feathers where we find them. So other people can enjoy it. Also, it is illegal to have them if you don't have a permit. <laughs> Tiny feathers, fluffy, soft feathers like this one belongs to a specific part of the uh, animal. These are feathers from the chest. You see, different texture, more fluffy. And they have the, uh, several layers of the. It basically keeps them, uh, uh, regulates the temperature in the animal. So that's the reason they are more fluffy. Now, I have a question. Uh, what, which one is your favorite bird? So we can start from there and maybe we can learn their calls, their behavior, something that you want to share. Is anyone interested in sharing? What's your favorite bird? It could be local, non-local, doesn't matter. And in the meantime, the people interact. I will show you something else. Our first bird that I want to show you. And also, if you can guess this one, can you please type it on the box? And we will be sure that uh, you're interested in this one. If not, I can change for another one. Okay, gonna put it here. Um, in the meantime that you are texting your favorite bird in the comment box, I will tell you something very important. How do we study birds in the best way? Well, we can use tools. The best tools to have. Binoculars. Field guides. I have a few here. All of them are good. Some people say like, uh, this is better, this doesn't matter. They're all good. Robin, okay. I have Robin because it's common, but we can learn a lot from Robin. Okay, this first guys. If you don't have binoculars, if you don't have uh, any book to serve as guide, well, you can just use a sketchbook. And what are you gonna sketch? The beak, the shape, the size, and then pro birds are hard to uh, photograph. They don't stay still. <laughs> so sketching them is a good way to start learning from, from them. So Robin, let's talk about uh, Robin. Robin is a bird that is very territorial. Oh, blue jays. Uh, I don't want to say that I don't like them, but uh, they behave uh, is very aggressive. <laughs> so, uh, and noisy, but I like them too. So. Uh, about Robin, they are very territorial, they are local. What do you think they like to eat? It's pretty obvious. Oh, sorry, sorry Robin, you can continue eating. Okay, they like to eat different things. But besides earthworms, what do you think a Robin might like to eat? Hmm. Because uh, you might consider that they were used to be nestling, they were babies, and probably a large earthworm like this will be hard to eat. But I'll let you know, the mother actually start with earthworms to, feel, uh, to feed uh, the babies after day five, let's say it. And then the bird, the mother will make it in small pieces so the nestling can eat it. Also, Robins has a, uh, uh, likes to eat different things.
caterpillar is excellent gas. After after the first week, the uh, nestling they will eat on large insects. O obviously by the mother. Robin is pretty interesting. It takes care of the baby for about 13, uh, 13 days. And yes, those kind of small insects to start. And they, they can switch. And what do they switch their diet is because, uh, because the season. They have to adapt through seasons to get their food. So in large insects and uh, caterpillars, they are also in their diet. But obviously earthworms is a, is a primary one. Oh, depending on the season again. <laughs> so, something very interesting about Robin is they have an amazing adaptation. They can build these nests that are, I would like to show you one example of a Robin nest. I collect this one uh, from, from last month. After the storm, this nest was abandoned and then uh, I was able to pick it out. Here. This is a beautiful robin nest. I want you to take a look. I hope you can see inside the nest. Look what a nice job. You can see the materials that they use. Twigs, grass, and there is also an egg there. With a hole, I know. I leave it that way because I want you to notice that that is all animals will have predators, almost all of them. And robins are not the exception. They are more burnable when they are uh, egg or uh, as, an e as an egg or they are uh, babies. The interesting thing here is that their predators can be a other bird. Do you have any guess what bird will like to bothers them if we can ki if we can say if we can say it that way? Probably you, probably you know, because you can see that the hole in the egg is specifically from a, from a beak. A bird came to the nest, maybe not to feed on them, but to kill, just to destroy the egg. Yes, uh, if you think it's not a big deal building a nest like this one, well, try to build one without using your hands or fingers and you will see. <laughs> and uh, something very interesting about the, this uh, nest is they build one per season. They don't return, the rum don't return to, to, to the same uh, nest. They have to build one each time. And uh, usually they will abandon them if we interact too much with them. They don't want humans to be touching their nest or their eggs. So if you have one in your yard, please leave it alone. Just uh, use your binoculars. You can get close, but try to not to disturb. So, <clears throat> I have something else to show you. Let me see if I can flip this up. Mm -hmm. I have other birds that are really interesting. Obviously, they, this kind of bird belongs to a different group. These are red tail hawk. Greyhorn Owl, Screech Owl, and guess what is this one? This is a tricky question, by the way, just in case. <laughs> I hope you can try to guess. This is a Screech Owl, what you guess for this guy here. Notice the difference of colors. But like I said, as a clue, it is a tricky question. In the meantime, the, I will wait a little bit to see if you can identify this owl. But what do they have in common? Red tail hawk, greyhorn owl, owl, screech owl. Can you guess what do they have in common? Common, common. Okay, let me tell you then. Oh, so with owl, that was my guest when uh, I arrived to the United States and I see this taxidermy animal <laughs> in, at Google Center and say, oh my God, I saw with owl, never saw one before. 
But uh, my colleague Lee told me, oh, oh, sorry, Ed, you're wrong. And I was wrong. This is Screech Owl. This is Screech Owl too. This is in a different uh, morph, in a different face. This is called Red Face or Red Morph Face. So they're both Screech Owls. I will turn them so you can see the back of them. Different color, even a different size, but it's the same animal. Um, probably something that we need to consider is if they were uh, uh, they were uh, through the process of taxidermy in different age too. Right here. Okay, now that we know this uh, screech owl, I would like to tell you something more about these two animals. I mean, one is, why do they have this beautiful color? Now, I'm gonna place next to him a uh, black oak bark. You notice some similar patterns because uh, they, birds like to camouflage. And birds that are not fast, they must find a way to stay camouflaged. So if they are birds that are not fast, they don't move enough. I mean, they know, don't move a lot. And they are in trees. Any place with big trees is a potential place for owls. Gray horn owls, they also own a beautiful camouflage pattern. Not the same, but similar. And probably if it's not similar to this piece of bark of black oak, it will be similar to other ones. Oh. And to let you know what the, all these birds have in common, the owls, the gray horn owl and the red toe hawk is talons. Talons is a specific adaptation for raptors. If the bird has talons, it belongs to a group called raptors. And uh, I would like to hear your opinion. These are big birds, right? What kind of predator or predators can feed on these two big guys? Can you guess or can you interact with me to tell me what kind of predators these two guys have? Oh, barn owl. Sorry, I just see this comment. No, this is a great, great horn owl, red tail hawk. And these two guys, same, they are screech owls. Even if they look the same, they are screech owls. So let me know if you can guess what kind of predators does the uh, screech, or does the uh, gray horn owl and the red tail hawk have? Okay. I'll let you know then. <laughs> Usually hawks, they don't get along with eagles. Obviously different size. They usually don't share the same space. They, they, have, they can find their food in different habitats and different spaces, so they don't have to fight over food. But if that's the case, uh, the eagle have a hundred chances against one. But in nature, uh, things are not like uh, pre-made. Uh, in some cases, the red tail hawk, it might get what he wants, but it's, it's rare. Against a bald eagle, for example, it's almost impossible. So, I would like to tell, I would like to show you something else. I have other animals to show you, other birds. Now that we're talking about adaptations a little bit, do you have any guess what kind of animal is this one? What kind of bird? I hope you can recognize it. This is a bird that we, is, can be seen here. 
And actually, this bird can be found in different colors. White, pretty, like, beautiful white color. And there is a huge debate if this bird and the white one, it is, uh, it belongs to the same species or is a subspecies. But actually, oh yes, great blue heron. That's correct, Aliyah. This is a great blue heron. And uh, it's pretty obvious what do they like to eat. Yes, as you can see, they like to eat fish, crabs, shrimps, anything that they can fish. They like their fisher. So the great blue heron can be other colors. Yes, it can be white, but we're talking same as the uh, screech owl. You can find them in two different uh, stages or, or colors. Something pretty important about this uh, animal are the feet and just to make a comparison I will show you this gull wall another kind of bird like ducks this is pretty similar to mallards but uh what's the difference between these two feet hmm you can see these ones in the gull wall and this one in the blue heron Okay, let's talk about the difference between the feet. These ones are called web feet. They are made to swim. These ones, they're not made to swim. As you can see, they're large, they're long. But these ones are made to stand up on swamp or soft grounds, like in the muddy uh, coaster or uh, shore of the pond of a lake and other bodies of water but they they don't swim they have they lack of these uh, wet feet that provides uh, other animals the ability of swimming the beak a different adaptation I will get closer so you can see the shape is totally different than this one. Oh, the bird calls. Yes, I have birds. Something pretty interesting is the birds interact with everything here. Uh, I bet they are afraid of a huge green owl in the, in the backyard. It's actually a robin making a bird call right on this slide birds are very very smart for example i use my knowledge on birds to try to uh to try to make them a balance in my in my yard for example i um i have snakes pet snake pets i use their snake shed um to protect my tomatoes right here and I, I place it on the, on the ground so I can skirt some chipmunks. But the birds, they also learned that trick because um, for, uh, they took the birds, the robin actually took my snake, snake shed and built their own nest with it. That's pretty smart because they will be scaring other birds that will come to their nest to uh, destroy their eggs. So that way they're using the same technique as I was using against the chipmunks, but in their favor. So birds can learn things. Uh, as that, that, will, that will be a behavioral adaptation. When a bird can learn something like that, that's a behavioral adaptation. Uh, if you use your observation skills, you will be able to notice it, that the birds can learn things. Can, some birds can even uh, make sounds that is also like communicating with us. They're not, they're just um, repeating sounds. Like crows can do that. Let me see, talking about calls, I would like to show you some calls. It's, 
interesting calls. All the meanings of the calls. The calls are, well, they have different sounds. Some are alert, alerts. I have seen uh, even two different species of birds work cooperating to scare away a red tail hawk. Um, a blue jay and a red cardinal, actually, uh, scaring away a red tail hawk. Because what did they have in common? The common is uh, the red hawk it will eat them both. <laughs> so they work together. Now, what we have in here is another example of birds that we can see in our region. This is a palliated woodpecker. Now we're going to be talking about calls. This is an example of a call. Okay. Let me see if batteries are working. <laughs> Excellent, isn't it? Well, that sound is unique and peculiar for woodpeckers also the drumming not all birds can do uh can peck the wood they need a specific adaptation to do that is to have a strong beak and uh when they when they do that they're not eating the wood what they're doing is trying to make holes with the strong beak to get their food from inside what they're looking for are bugs and also they're looking for sap and uh, let me see I would like to show you one more call from a specific bird that I like oh by the way let's let's hear the gray horn owl gray horn owls they sounds like this. This is one of the many calls that they can make. Okay. And again, the call it might vary depending of the situation that, that, that they are exposed to. Um, also, what other birds do you like beside uh, robin, blue jays, the ones that you're mentioning? Is, is there, there is any other bird that, uh, that would you like to talk Oh no. Okay. Getting back to the raptors. You can see some of the characteristics is to have big eyes. They are predators. Beside the physical adaptation of talons, they, they need big eyes and strong beak. So now I think uh, we don't have too much time left. There is so many things that I could like, I would like to share with you, but uh, unfortunately I can't. Now, I would like to show you to, to end our communication today is a very specific or special animal, bird. This sparrow. Why is it special? Well, this sparrow is uh, one of the birds that, that can be found in every state and province in North America. Um, there is a lot of different uh, species of sparrow, and uh, the one that this very common is called house sparrow. Is the, the one that we have around, and. Uh, I have a question, maybe would you, maybe would you like to try to answer? 
What is the song sparrow's main source of food during winter time? Any guess? What is a song sparrow main source of food during the winter? Any guess? Okay. I think uh, we don't have interactions. That's okay. I'll let you know. Seeds. Because that's the food available during that season. And to end this uh, short program, I would like to tell you how to help birds. You can play, uh, plant native shrubs. You can plant uh, native trees. If, you've, if you found an injured or orphan uh, bird, you can contact a rehabber. You can contact a wildlife center. Uh, they basically will uh, tell you to put the bird or the, uh, the orphan or the injured animal in a box. Be sure that the box will have, uh, have holes because they still need to breathe. And uh, uh, transport it immediately as you make contact with the place. Tell them like, I'm, I'm gonna bring an injured bird. If you know what species it is, is, is helpful. If you don't, you can try to describe them to them or, and they will ask you a few questions so they can be sure that uh, you're doing your, the best you can. And uh, definitely uh, anything that you can do to help birds uh, is impacting on your life. So helping birds is helping you. If you have any questions, you can contact us at any moment. You can send us emails at scucocenter.org. Like uh, mine is eduardo at scucocenter.org. Please feel free to, to chat with me anytime you want to. Uh, about any other topics. It could be plants, insects, or uh, um, how to improve your garden. I'm interested in everything. So don't forget to uh, follow our programs at Skuku Center. That's our way uh, to help our fauna and um, plants. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed a little bit of uh, some uh, interesting facts of on animals. Uh, any questions, please contact us and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.